smooth, right? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently on the uh, calendar we are doing smooth footwork and we're going to be doing smooth frame. So when we say smooth, let's address that first because we use a lot of dance jargon sometimes and that really doesn't kind of give everybody who's never danced before or has little dance experience kind of an idea of what we're doing. So when we say the word smooth, we're referring to social style dancing and the four smooth dances in that group are waltz, tango, foxtrot, and Viennese waltz. Those are our four smooth dances, which are, when we say smooth, we're talking about competitive dancing normally. So when we talk about it um, in American style, we're talking about things that are developed out of social dancing versus the international style of ballroom, which is also referred to as standard or the English style, or used to be called modern. It's going through a lot of name changes, okay? So what we teach primarily in the Arthur Murray is social style dancing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about our social smooth dancing and some of the things that we should be trying to accomplish through our style. Okay, so let's just take our Foxtrot Basic, right? So with the Foxtrot Basic, right, hopefully everybody has done it before, forward, forward, side, close feet, forward, forward, side, close feet. I'm gonna rotate that, we're gonna do it again. You can see it from a different angle. So forward, forward, side, close feet, forward, forward, side, close feet, all right? So now the most obvious thing that we can start with before we even, even start talking about the feet is the dance position. So if I line it up towards the camera just for a moment, right? So Ray is on my right side and I'm standing in front of her right side. So in the camera, if we go ahead and take our frame, there's nothing in the middle between the two of us, right? Same thing, if I flip it around. Cool, if we're in frame, there's this space in the center where there's nothing. So we're not here. How's it going? We're here. Now Ray disappeared, so nobody can see Ray, right? So we don't want that. We don't want Ray to disappear, right? We're saying we don't want to be blocking each other. The idea in our smooth or our ballroom dances in either style is to be able to get slightly offset, okay? Now, that's very important in a dance like Foxtrot for the leader because if we can step back a little bit so we can be in the frame here. When she steps back, I need to step through in between with my right foot in between the lady's feet when I'm dancing my Foxtrot basic. Because one of the things that tends to happen for gentlemen is we tend to go forward and we kind of step over here. And then we try to sidestep from there. Oh, good. So we end up with this kind of strange <laughs> sidestepping position that we really don't want to have in our box truck. Okay? So the first thing is just getting used to being on this side and then stepping with the right foot near my partner's right foot. So I should be right next to the right leg. Sometimes I'm going to be making contact when I'm doing that well. Put out your right leg for me. Cool. So there's this contact on the inside of the right knee that we're hoping to accomplish. This means that I'm in my lane versus moving away from it. Now I'm going to be stepping on Ray's other foot, right? So we're going to show that the other angle here. So the right foot forward. There, good. So see, we're trying to find this moment where we got two right legs that are right next to each other and not. <clears throat> Over here. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that would be just dance position for Foxtrot. And since the leader's going forward the majority of the time, he's going to be the one who really has to get um, comfortable putting the right foot in between and right next to the lady's leg when we're dancing. So again, in between, side together, right? So that, that kind of has to do with foot placement or foot position but it really has to do with dance position, okay? Now that'll be true for waltz, that'll be true for tango, foxtrot, and Viennese, right? But we're gonna stick with the next topic, which is gonna be footwork, right? Okay, so some of you may know this already, some of you may not, but the idea when we're trying to create momentum, power, when we're dancing ballroom dances, is we need a heel lead, and we need to release our toe from the floor when we're moving backwards. Okay, so this position looks like this, right? So the toe is up, right? 
Now that means if I'm going forward, then the toe is up and it goes down, or when I go back, the toe comes off the floor as I'm moving backwards before I collect my foot. So I'm creating that position as I go forward, and I'm creating that position as I go back. Now the issue is if I leave my toes glued to the floor, <laughs> so what I'm doing is I always tell everybody, you're, you're dancing with the parking brake on, right? You're driving the car with the parking brake on if you're doing this, right? This is correct in rhythm dancing, that the heel is up and the ball of the foot is on the floor. It's not good for our ballroom dancing, our, our smooth dancing according to this, right? So we wanna get good as a leader and as a follower of making sure we're gonna split this up a little bit more just for exercise so the visual's there. So that when I'm going forward, I've already got my foot work happening, right? And then same. So if you can see it raise, left toe's coming up, my right heel is coming up at the same time. Exactly, and then as she's starting to lower her back heel, I'm lowering the front toe as we get into this moment when we collect, right? So if we're doing it, just right, number one, our foot's acting like a rocking chair, but then when the front of one foot's going down, then the back of the other foot, that's really hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, I haven't worked out all my origami with my hands here. Right, so just that timing of collecting, and then same on the next step, trying to get that same idea happen. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Good, and then we'll talk about side step. So this would be the same if Ray was doing the forward basics. We're going to scoot her back just a little bit. So she's going forward. My right foot? Mm -hmm. Slow, slow, and then we go cool, quick, quick, right? So we're going to advance into junior walk or some of the bronze two steps or even beyond that, bronze three and four. Then we're going to need her to do what I just did. Now she's got to come forward between and she's got to use the heel and then we can go to the side. All right, so if we're gonna do a front and a back basic here, just for a moment, trying to produce rolling through the feet, side together, rolling through the feet, side together. Yes. <clears throat> so that's the biggest thing in the beginning for, for new dancers getting the, the footwork, the heel lead on the forward steps is very challenging because we're always afraid of the same thing, stepping on our partner. Right, it's always the big one. Or being stepped on by the partner. That's the other one. <laughs> Next would be falling down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Probably uh, wardrobe malfunctions would be the next one, yes. Yeah, in the hierarchy. <coughs> yeah, in the hierarchy of things. That's usually, yeah, yeah, usually that would be the next one as far as peers go. Yeah. Right, so, but then the one of the things that has to happen over time is we do need to get comfortable practicing this action by ourselves so that we're really good at balancing ourselves in between our feet and controlling when the heel and the toe hit the floor. Because if we get to the point where we're doing the footwork correctly, but we get it, then you just have square tires on your car. Well, and let me, can I ask you a question? Oh, she has a question. I, do. I don't know if you can hear her. But. Um, so when we're gonna practice something like that, would you mm -hmm. start practicing it with a small step first? balance? Uh, this is a great question. Well, two things I would say if you want to start practicing this idea. Number one, I would do it in bare feet or I would do it in a very flat shoe that has almost no heel. So I would avoid your dance shoes in the beginning, right? Unless you're wearing like a gentleman's shoe. Gentleman's shoe tends to have a very small heel of any and it's very flat and wide in the back. But if you're a lady, I would avoid your dance shoe in the beginning when you start learning this. The second piece of advice past shoes is I like to stand in a hallway when I do it. So I can get one hand on each wall so that when I'm stepping and I'm trying to get to this balancing position, see, where I'm in between feet, I have something that helps me get my balance until I can find my own balance in between my feet. So the hallway in your house, especially if you have wood floors and you have a hallway, it's fantastic. Not as good on carpet, but you know, Sometimes even just standing next to a wall or something that you can actually press against when you're in the middle. So you can use that just to check in with your balance. Because it's funny, we don't need just a slight bit of assistance normally with our balance to hold it. But even that little bit can help us while we're trying to figure it out. So 
that would be the thing. Flatter shoes, more, more comfortable shoes, bare feet, and then find yourself a wall that acts like your ballet bar and helps give you balance. Yeah, it'll help the instability you feel side to side when mm -hmm. you're trying to balance on your, your feet like that. Yeah. Cool. All right. So now we've got that in Foxtrot, right? I didn't stop. I didn't start the stopwatch. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So now let's talk about the sidestep, right? Because we're going to talk about the difference between the sidestep and the Foxtrot on the box step two. Yeah. And our regular uh, magic step. And then we're going to talk about the sidestep difference in the walls, okay? Because this is where I see people get a little bit confused about how their feet work on chaussees or sidesteps, right? So when we're looking at the sidestep, I'm going to turn it towards the back of the feet, hopefully. There we go. Nice. So when I'm going sideways in my foxtrot, I want to make sure I'm arriving with my foot on the floor. Now, some people are of the opinion that when we do the sidestep, that both heels should be down on the arrival. Both heels down, okay? I'm of the belief that the uh, heel that you're standing on when you take the sidestep can be up, right? It's just the one that's collecting has to be on the floor when I arrive. So for me, when I sidestep, I still like this heel up, but I want to make sure that I've got the in-between moment where the, both heels are up, but then my arriving foot, the heel is absolutely flat as I arrive. Heel is flat as I arrive, right? Because that's going to separate my waltz from my box drop, because I'm going to arrive with both heels up when I'm dancing a waltz, right? So that's one of the things that I see a lot when I'm dancing is people are uncertain. They take side steps and they're like, they don't know where to be in their up and down, right? So as we get better at that, there's a moment where we want to be between feet. So I'm between the balls of both feet. And then as I transfer the weight, I'm going to lower down into a flex knee with a flat foot. Up, flex, up, flex, up, flex. Right? So if I do that again, I'm going to do it uh, with my back facing. So once again, up, flex with a flat foot, flex with a flat foot, with a flat foot. So for me, like that little exercise of just that chasse, super important because that would eventually lead to grapevine. Because I need to go side close, side rotate, side rotate. Side rotate. Yeah? So if I've got control of the rise and fall, when I step to the side and I drop, then I'm going to be able to go side and side and make sure that I'm in control of my weight change in between. If my feet are too flat, then I'm going to dance my foxtrot side step like this. Once again, tango. So, and also I'm not really using the ankles to propel me, which is what I need to do in box truck, because I'm going to need to travel quite a bit. So is to say okay in the very, very beginning. Oh, okay. Talking about, but just where our feet go. Yeah, so foot positioning in the beginning, we just need to make sure that we're trying to get our feet to come past each other when we walk, and when we take our side step, getting our feet closed all the way. So basic foot position just has to be this idea of a forward walk where I follow through into a straight line, I take a side step, and then I close my feet all the way. Those are our first goals. So we don't necessarily focus on footwork as a new dancer. We focus on foot position. Then once we're good with foot position, we can start talking about footwork. But there's probably going to be other elements that we're going to be focused on past foot position in the beginning, which would be like timing and lead and follow and other things. So footwork is going to usually come a little bit later in the process. So if you're a newer dancer, you're probably going to just be focusing on where your feet go. I call this twister dancing. Left foot blue, right foot red, right? This is, we just want to figure out where these things go underneath us while we're moving, right? We're not concerned about what part of the foot we're landing on and all that thing yet, right? But as we go along, if we want to start to create different actions, by the time we're on our bronze two, we need to be 
addressing footwork because a great line becomes very hard if we don't have footwork to be able to allow us to move in the way that we would like it. Yep. Great vine with no footwork is good. Yeah, it's tough, <laughs> man. That's a very hard step with no footwork, yeah. right? Are we good? Mm -hmm. So I think that covers Foxtrot. Let's talk about uh, the rise and fall and the walt. So let's talk about the walt box. Okay. So if we contrast the Foxtrot box for a moment, slow, when we're going over, we're going to lower into the closing action. Slow, we go over, we're going to lower into it, right? So we feel like we kind of go over this little hump. Right? So there's a little arc that we kind of go over, a little rainbow looking thing, right? Yep, up and over. So one of the old things when they started teaching Fox Shot is Fox Shot is swinging over the fence, Walt is swinging under the fence. Right, so we're gonna work on the under the fence part, right? To start talking about waltz. Okay, so when we look at a waltz box, let's, we'll both do it. We'll start on the left. Of the... So when we come in forward here, we need to also work on feet here. So our left foot, we're gonna have a heel lead as we go forward, trying to roll through. We're gonna take a side step. When we take our side step, in the beginning, all I wanna make sure is that the knees are flexed, and then I feel like I'm just straightening the knees as I close. And then I'm going to go back. Knees are flexed. I'm going to straighten the knees as I close. And that's going to be my body rise. Okay? So body rise is when we just use the knees to create an up and a down. So when we dance our waltz and we go and one, two, Three. Once I get there, I'm going to lower to whatever is comfortable for me at my stage of dancing. I go back. One. I go side. Two. I straighten and close. Three. And one, two, three. And one, two, three. Right. Now, as I get more comfortable, we can start talking about foot rise. Now, the, the issue with foot rise is making sure that we have our balance. But number two is like, well, why do we even need to do foot rise? We, we, don't, we don't really. It's very easy for us to dance a nice basic waltz, not using any foot rise whatsoever. So at the moment, we have zero foot rise. We're just dancing body rise. Yeah? So it can look very lovely and feel really nice with absolutely no foot rise. The issue becomes is as we go into higher levels, we get to our bronze two and we start working on the bridge from bronze two into bronze three, foot rise becomes a necessity because we need to be able to turn much further, right? Because what happens is our steps go from just being sideways to ending more backwards. And when that happens, the weight's gonna tend to go into the heel of the foot as we're trying to turn. This is gonna cause a problem when we get to higher levels because I need to feel like I'm continuing to elevate on the foot and then come out, right? So I really don't need foot rise until I get to the end of my bronze three. Yeah? I'm not in the, in the bronze two before I get into my bronze three. My apologies. Yes. Okay? So, but if we want to talk about foot rise in our box, we want to make sure as we go side, right, that the heel is up. And then all I do is close my feet. And if my heels stay up, I've done what I need to do. Right? Once again, foot to the side, heels up, heel stays up. I rise. Right? Because so many times, I don't know how many times I see this. When we're in the beginning stages, and I'm okay with this, by the way, for you looking like this as a dancer for a little while. Not forever. This is not acceptable forever. I don't want to see this as you continue. But this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. This feeling of I'm really articulating what the feet do, right? But for me as a dancer, what I want to get to happening, and I'm gonna actually turn this a little bit at an angle so we can see it, is we place our foot to the side, right? The footwork has been done. The heel is up. As long as I don't change that ankle and I just close my feet, I'm gonna rise, and then I'm gonna come down. So I don't need to feel like I'm pushing my way upward. It's like a ramp. 
If you've got one leg that's lower and one that's higher, you're gonna go up the hill. Yeah. So, and you have a running start. <laughs> if you've taken that heel lead we talked about, see? I've taken that heel lead and I've got a running start and I just throw that leg out there and that heel stays up, I'm gonna sail right up the ramp. I don't have to force myself onto the ramp. Now if I take a bad footwork, I'm gonna stop and now I'm gonna have to, okay, now I'm gonna start working, right? Oh dear. Oh dear, right, exactly. So if I take a bad footwork at the beginning right there and slide that forward, now I'm gonna have no momentum to get up the hill. You're at the bottom of the hill with zero momentum. Now you're in trouble. So now you're gonna to have to push your way through your rides. But like I said, if we can create a nice smooth rolling action like we talked about in Foxtrot, right? And we can just go right through, we'll go right up that hill without a problem. Roll through, right up the hill without a problem. Yeah? So the key for us as dancers is just making sure that we get good at this feeling of rolling through our feet. And once we have momentum, it's easy to go up the hill and come back down, right? Then it doesn't look so, well, it's like someone stuck you with a pen when you rise, right? Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Stepped on something, right? Surprise rise. Surprise rise, that's interesting. <laughs> cool, so once again, if we go one, two, so both heels are up. Now it's important that I lower both the standing foot all the way down. Let's we'll talk about that one thing before we get done here this evening. So both heels are up. I'm gonna make sure my left heel comes down completely. So I'm on my leg 100%, and now I can start to move out into the next step. Right, once again, as I come through, I'm gonna be on that leg 100%, right? So I shifted my weight at the top of the rise and lowered onto the new foot, and then I'm going. Once again, I'm not a stickler for making sure that both heels are down. Some people are. There's some teachers who are like, okay, both heels have to be on the floor when you lower. End of story. story, right. I'm, I, the one you're standing on has to be timed correctly in the fox trot or the wall. So to me, it doesn't really matter which one you're doing. It just has to be timed correctly, the, the foot that you're going to be landing on. If it's timed incorrectly, you're going to have trouble with the style and the movement of the dance. All right, we didn't start a clock. I have no idea. But I think that's probably going to be adequate for you. That's not good for me. That's not good for me. Yeah, no, right? So go back, you can rewatch the video um, if you want to catch any of any extra pointers in there. Cool. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.